I'm now going to try to talk to you about logarithmic equations and, and uh, how to solve them. So we're going to find the roots of uh, the base 10 log of 9x plus 7 equals 1. And we're going to solve for x. For the first thing we do uh, to this statement is we take the anti-log of both sides and that means that the expression passed into the log turns into simply 9x plus 7, the log disappears. And the anti-log of 1, of course, is 10 to the 1, which is 10. And now we can solve for x. Now, taking away 7 from both sides, we get 3 uh, and 9x on the other side. And x becomes 1 third, or 3 over 9. So let's move on to the next uh, problem. Uh, this time, uh, let's just uh, show that this kind of thing works in any base. And we'll uh, look at the base 3 log of t minus 1 plus 1 equals 0, and we're going to solve for t in this one. Now, uh, this time, we're just going to move the 1 over to the other side. We're going to, in, in effect, take away 1 from both sides. And n just like last time, we're taking the anti-log of both sides. But this time, instead of a base 10, we're going to take a base 3. And because we have a minus 1 on the other side, we get 3 to the minus 1, or 1 third. So that's... Uh, t minus 1 is 1 third, and if we add 1 to both sides, we get 4 thirds uh, as the answer to t. I also thought it might be worthwhile to uh, just review the laws of logs. Um, and since I have a lot of room here on this uh, sheet of paper to write it, and I don't want to waste space, I'm kind of stingy like that, I'm going to uh, show you that uh, the first thing is the power law, and that's log of a to the b equals b log a, meaning that you can bring the b to the front. Also, log a b equals log of a plus log of b, and that's also uh, another thing. That's also called the product law, if you will. And uh, of course along with the product law is something called the quotient law and uh, that's log a over b equals the difference between log a and log b. And that's that and uh, just uh, spend a second or two just to uh, show you um, that right side up and just have a little close up there. And there are three main logs which in one way or another uh, govern just about all the logs we take. Um, of course, uh, there are many variations on this. Remember, for example, the power law could be fractions. So we're going to now just look at our next problem where we try to solve uh, for some kind of a problem. We're trying to solve uh, for the log of p plus 5 minus the log of p plus 1. And we're going to make that equal to 3. So um, sorry that the top of the display is cut off there, but well, at least narrate your way through uh, the hard to see bits as well. Well, p log of p plus five minus log of p plus one is a candidate for the quotient law because we have a difference of logs. So that means we can rewrite this as the log of p plus five over p plus one. This is still equal to three. We don't do anything to the right hand side. And now we are free now to take the anti-log of both sides. That means we can now write this as p plus 5 over p plus 1 equals 3. Or 10 to the 3, sorry. Taking the anti-log of both sides means we've got to raise both sides as a power of 10. So uh, that means that the contents of what got passed into the log is now the actual number, and uh, 3 becomes 10 cubed. So now we can multiply both sides by p to the 1, and that's 1,000 times p to the 1 equals p plus 5. Now we can gather, well, we can now distribute the 1,000 into p plus 1, and that's p, 1,000p plus 1,000, and that's still equal to p plus 5. Now gather our like terms, and that's 999p equals minus 995, uh, because we are subtracting 1,000 from both sides. And solving for p, then we divide both sides by 999. We get negative 995 over 999.
here's another situation where we uh, solve uh, a, a situation for you know a power law where the law the ex the power of the uh, expression passed into the log is a fraction and uh, notice that we can apply the same thing to an entire expression so notice that log a to the half becomes half log a well log of the square root of x squared minus 3x becomes a half times the log of x squared minus 3x without the square root this is still equal to one half we can now divide both sides by one half and we get x log of x squared minus 3x equals one now uh, for this step we take the anti-log of both sides uh, and that's because uh, there's a temptation of taking the log of x squared minusing the log of 3x which is a mistake because that's the quotient law but if you have the log of an expression that has a difference inside that's not the quotient law that's simply a polynomial expression so we have to learn to distinguish between the two here so this becomes simply x squared minus 3x equals 10 and notice this becomes a quadratic which factors nicely um, x minus 5 multiplied by x minus 2 actually x plus 2 equals 0 so x equals f x equals 5 is one um, such answer and the other is x equals 2 and it it sort of begs the question now you you must now refer back to the original log equation and which one is correct which uh, wi you know which one is correct it turns out after I tested both answers that both of them are actually right so both uh, actually work so uh, in this case uh, we actually have two answers for this log negative two works and five works now how about a situation where you have a to the b equals c to the x well for that one uh, you simply have to take the log of both sides if we're solving for x that means you have to take the log of both sides because x is in the exponent so that's there's no choice there now um, this becomes by the power law b log base c of a equals log base c of c all multiplied by x so that's kind of what we're intending to do here we're intending to use the power law on both sides simply because we have numbers raised to a power on both sides and that becomes as I just said b times the base uh, base c log of a equals x times the base c log of c now if you know your logs rather well then you would know that log base c of c is kind of redundant because the log of a number which is the same base as the what you're taking the log of um, actually equals one so for example log base two of two is one well this works out to b log base c of a and that's equal to x and we can rewrite the last expression by substituting uh, x for b log base c of a as an exponent of c